We have seen how to get information about our objects, but what if we need information that these objects create? For example, let's say I need to know the distance between two lines. That info is not displayed in the properties palette or in a list command because it's not an object that I can select. However, there are many tools or utilities available to us in AutoCAD. Let's open up the architectural example file. Now I can get the coordinates off of any point if I have them turned on, of course. I can turn them on if they're not already under the customization option right down here. If I go all the way up to the top, there's a coordinate setting. Click it to turn it on. Or I can use the command called ID, just the letter I and the letter D. Press return, pick on a point, and that will give you the specific X, Y, and Z coordinates for that point. So that's very easy to do. Now AutoCAD has a measurement command called distance. Now this command has been in there for a very long time. It's very easy to use. Just type in DI, press enter, one point, and then pick the second point. And it will give you an X, Y, Z delta or change in direction. And it will also give you an absolute distance between the two points that you measured. It will also tell you the angle in your different planes that you have picked it in. So that's very simple but it's limited. It will only give you the distance between two set points, but that's okay. Many times that's all you need. AutoCAD does have a much more advanced measurement set of tools called Measure Geome or Measure Geometry is what it's short for. If you go to the Home tab on the ribbon and go to the Utilities panel, you can find your ID point right here. You can also find the Measure Geome command right here. You can measure distance, radius, angle, area, or volume. We'll start off with distance. Select the command, I pick one point, and then I pick a second point. It works the same way as the DI or distance command. But as you can see here, I have some more options. Let me zoom out a little bit. Let's say I need to get the length of this wall and this wall the total. So if I go up to my utilities again, go to measure, Go to distance. I pick my first point, and now there are options in the command line for multiple points. Type in M or just select it. Now I can go and select as many points as I need, and I can find the perimeter of this room. Once I've picked all of my points, press enter, and it will give me a grand total of that line. So you can find the distance of multiple points. Now it's a true distance point A to point B straight line. It won't give you the distance along an arc. Now, there's also radius. Radius is very simple. You just find an arc, select it, and it tells you the radius. Now there's an angle option. That's very simple as well. Pick your first line, pick your second line, and it will tell you the angle. Very simple, very easy to use. Now the area and the volume options work exactly the same way. So I'm going to kind of cover both of those at the same time. Area works very similarly to the distance multiple point option. First, you have to define your area. Now you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can pick your points. So I can pick these four points. Or if I have a closed object, I can just select the object. I get to that by picking the object option. So once I click that, then I click the object and it will find it for me. But otherwise, I go with the default setting, pick my first point, my second, my third, and it makes this green window. That's telling me that everywhere that's green is going to be my area. Once I've picked all of my points, you need a minimum of three points, of course, I will press the Enter key, and it gives me my square area in square units. This happens to be in feet, and so it interprets that into feet. Plus, it also gives you the perimeter length. So this is another way to find the perimeter of an object very quickly. Now, there are some options to the area option. I can add and subtract areas, which is kind of nice. So let's say I want to find the area of this whole building minus this middle room. Now, I could do a couple of different things. I could find each individual area and then add them all up. Or I can find the area of the entire room, then find the area of this room and subtract it. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off, since I know I'm going to have to add and subtract, I have to start off telling it to add. So I use A for the add area option. Press enter, and then I just find my area like I normally would. So I'm going to click on my outer four most points. 
And now press enter. So I have my total area right here. Now I'm going to type in S for subtract area, press enter, and then I'm going to pick the inside of this room. And as you can see, it's a different color, it's red. Once I've done that, press enter. When I'm completely done, press enter again, and here's my total area, minus this area right there. So I can do a couple of different steps in one turn, and I won't have any math errors. Now for volume, volume works exactly the same way. Pick my points, press return, and then I specify a height. So let's say this is a 10 foot building, and that gives me my volume. In this case, it's in cubic inches. And that's how you can use these different tools to measure things. You can measure distance, you can measure an angle, you can measure the area, you can measure length, and you can measure volume.